Hey, lead guitar players. We all love Jimi Hendrix. Don't we love this part of Jimi Hendrix? Oh, I love those things. I call them Jimmy's Little Chords, of course from Little Wing, but Jimmy did them everywhere. And let's take a quick look at a simple idea of how to memorize them and how to know to move them around. Let's check it out. Hey, lead guitar players. We all love Jimi Hendrix. We all love his songs, his craft, his tone, his attitude, everything about it. But one of the things I've always loved, and was one of the bigger mysteries, the subtle things, was Jimmy's little chords. Those little tasty, tiny little nuggets. Those little things that connected the world between his chords and leads. You know, they seem like two separate ideas, but Jimmy seemed to bridge them. Uh, once I figured out his kind of devices, I guess, of how he probably was thinking about how he moved these ideas around, um, it became pretty simple, actually. Uh, I'm sure in Jimmy's brilliance, there was always a simplicity. It made sense. So I think Jimmy, just by looking at his, his solos and transcriptions and playing along with him for over the years, um, I believe that when Jimmy looked at a chord shape, he would look at the different places that would make sound around a chord shape. Uh, kind of this, this, some of this goes back to the king box. So if you think of the pattern one E form bar chord, I'm right here on G on the third fret, you can see the king box is right underneath it. Um, and Jimmy would tap into those notes as he played his bar chord. Uh, I realized it again once uh, I figured out Little Wing and that I realized that each of the moves he made surrounded each chord of the chord progression. Uh, once I was able to isolate that again and relate it to a chord shape, uh, then I was able to capitalize it and move it around a bit. So here's the primary move I want you to learn to get this sound. This is the trickiest little part, but once you get it, you can move it everywhere and it does a lot of things for you. The idea is, let's see, we're looking at the G bar chord right here on the third fret. Um, and I'm looking at this, what I call a little mini bar, the top two strings on the third fret. So we can slide that around. Jimmy does that a lot. You can almost always tap into that sound. But Jimmy's sound is a little combination of this move. So we're going to hammer on the B string, third fret to fifth fret. But we're doing that at the same time that we're making a little bar like that. So if you notice, we have a little bar, and we're going to hammer, at least for now, just on the second string. The idea is not to interrupt the first string that's underneath it. So let me see if I can get this right. Where I'm going to play this incorrectly first. You'll hear two notes, and then when I hammer, you'll only hear one note. Right there, see how it goes only to one note? So watch, two notes, one note. And you don't want that. What you do want is both notes to keep ringing. So one stays the same and one's hammering on. Let's check that out again. So here's, the, here's how it should sound. The, ha uh, the bar, the hammer. Here's how both notes are still ringing. Here it is again. If you can get that little move down, you are probably 60 to 70% of the way there to all those little Hendrix moves. Um, it's just a matter of navigating them properly. You can manipulate this move in different ways. We want to think of licks as not as a static picture, but a flexible point in motion. We can move and, and manipulate a device. That's why I don't, I don't even really think of them as licks. I think of them as devices that I can manipulate for different songs, different moods, different tempos, different chords, whatever. So Jimmy, for instance, might uh, have hammered on. Sometimes you do like double hammer-ons. You might hammer on and pull off. Again, you can mix them up, just playing them normal. So play it, play it with the bar. And you can um, slide the bar as well. If you practice that move on each pair of strings, there's only so many combinations, right? So on the B and the E string. Now when you do it on the G and the B strings, it's going to have a different color to it. It's a, little, a lot more dissonant. 
You're playing notes that are a whole step away, like C to D or something, right? This is your, this is the, the C note, this is the D. You're hammering on from a B flat right here on the third fret. But adds a nice tension, and I'll show you in a second. We can go back to the same shape on the D and the G strings. On the A and the D strings. And again, it's not how we manipulate them, it's just what we can manipulate. Uh, and then finally on the thick two strings, on your low E and your A string. It's a little woofy down there, a little muddy. But people definitely still use these. So if we practice, what you would do just to practice the physical part of this is go right across each pair of strings. Right there you can almost start to hear the sound of it. Now when Jimmy, to put this particular one in action, uh, Jimmy looked at, a, let's say, just our E form shape. Uh, he realized that the sounds, he probably did it by ear, but if you look at the notes and stuff, you can do it here on the top two strings. You've got them on the A and the D strings. And another one on the E and the A string. Now to deal with the B and the G string, there's the staggered shape. This one looks like you're almost playing a D chord. So you're gonna put your middle finger on the B string, third fret, second fret of the G string with the first finger. And it's the same principle. We're playing this like we did the little double stop here. And the tricky part is we need to hammer on that third finger on the G string without interrupting the B string. Here's how it sounds proper. Both notes still ringing. Uh, improper, the way you don't want it, is when two notes go to one note like this. You hear a drop out. But you can see I, I almost have to angle my hand back in order to make that happen. Try to get a nice curl with that first knuckle right here to get over, arch over those notes. And again, same idea is that Jimmy might just play these as normal phrases. Hammer on. Hammer on and pull off. Uh, you can even slide these two. David Gilmore does this on Wish You Were Here. So that's how he would deal with this little angled spot in the bar chord. If you notice, when you hammer on, the two highest notes you play are actually in the bar chord. So a lot of these are kind of like part of the chord and a little ornamental kind of color sounds. So over a G chord, e, the E form or your sixth string form, you can play uh, here on the third and fifth, the staggered one. Then the same information happens again on the A and the D, the E and the A, and the low E. Then you try to just kind of push it off the shore and kind of put, put it in motion. So much of music is when you practice practicing stuff, these are the mechanic part. Now you try to put it in musical mode. Almost like you flip a switch, now I'm in music mode. Imagine you're on stage and you have to jam and you have to make music. This is how you can try to practice this stuff. So I like to do a little like bass, bass strum. And then do one of those little Hendrix fills. So I'll do that one. And that one. experimenting, playing them versus hammer-ons, and pull-offs. Try to feel like you're carrying the weight of the groove, right? You want to own this. Okay, you can slide those bars as well. You can just play on one of the ideas. right? Uh, you just have to hang out with them, groove them. That's what Jimmy did. Jimmy just found these and then put them into action and played endlessly. Didn't practice. He played. And that's one of the secrets too. Play. Don't practice as much. Um, once you get this comfortable in a chord, you can then try to say move it between two chords. Let's do it from G to C. Same idea. A uh, quick note, you probably saw me earlier when I did the staggered uh, hammer on pull off. Jimmy would often add the root note 
with the, I, mean, in my case, I've used my pinky, um, thinking what the note that would be under the pinky here in the bar chord form. So here it is from G to C, if we want to practice one bar each. Right, so it's pretty easy, just keep it moving. You can vary like that. Start adding the other shapes. So awesome. So that's just a start. There's so many different ways to manipulate and move these ideas. You can explore the minor chords, other chord shapes that Jimmy used. Jimmy really dug deep into this technique. But the first thing you need to do is that one move. Get that happening first, and you'll be well on your way to making these chords uh, make you sound awesome. That's what we want to have uh, as a good sound, right? All right, check out uh, leadguitarworkshop.com. Please hit the subscribe button, uh, hit the share button, hit the comments below. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you want to hear more stuff about. I have a ton of ideas. Um, happy playing, rock and roll, and I'll see you guys out there.